Wait a minute. Good morning. Morning, Alexis. Good morning, Mr. B. We're needing. Wow. Morning, Aiden. Good morning. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Chance. Good morning. Okay, we're gonna start in about three minutes, you guys. You know, I, I give I give us five five minutes for anybody that's kind of straggling. Just taking my role. I'm not going to invite somebody here. Okay, we've got about two minutes and we're gonna get going. You might wanna grab a notebook, you guys, take some notes. We're gonna cover a lot of stuff today. 
I don't think you're going to be able to commit it all to memory, even though you're getting amazing brains. Okay, we're gonna get started here in just a second. Hey, Toby. Hello. You came in and then you went back out. Yeah, my thing crashed. Oh, okay. Like your meeting? What? Like your meeting crashed? Yeah, it had a whole long list and it said that it crashed. Oh, okay. Hang on, I'm just inviting somebody here. Just give me a second. There we go. Okay, well, the important thing is you're here. Okay, we got a lot to cover today. All right, we're, we're gonna get into lift safety. Okay, I'm just making sure I got everybody here. If I didn't say good morning to you, good morning. It's another rainy day. I cannot believe how much rain we get here. This is just, it hasn't rained, I think in, well, just rained last, this past weekend in Orange County, where I live anyway. And it hasn't rained, I think, I think it had been six months before we had any rain since that last time. So I'm just like, you know, it's like super dry. So here it's just like, man, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. It's just like, it's unbelievable. Um, I wanna show you a picture of my sister's house in New Jersey, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, other areas of the country. Let me pull it up. Here we go. So this is, um, I'm gonna put it in. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can everybody see that okay? That's um, snow. Oh, hang on. They got about two feet, I think. Can you see everybody see that? That's your porch. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, that's her porch. This is in North Jersey. Um, that's her shovel and snow back there, but I don't know if you can see. There's one with the car. It's not there. The car's in the back. I think it's this one. Oh yeah, the car's in the back there. That's her backyard. She's got, I think, about a half acre or maybe an acre back there. So they got about two feet of snow. I think the most they had gotten was about, I think they got eight inches about two or three weeks ago and that pretty much melted because the temperature kind of went back up. This is a real serious storm. And it's uh, kind of beautiful when it was like that. When I used to wake up when I was a kid like that, we would go listen to the radio. So you're talking about the seventies. We go listen to the radio to find out if we were gonna have a snow day or not. Cause sometimes there would be so much snow. Parents couldn't get the kids to school and they didn't have buses. 
I, I don't think I, I lived across the street from the high school, so um, I'm not too sure if they even had buses. I don't think they had buses, so I just walked across the street. And when I went to middle school, I walked there too, and that was like a mile there and a mile back. Just walking was just kind of what you did. But uh, there was so much snow that the kids couldn't get to school. They couldn't drive. So they would just call it a snow day. So we would just go outside and just play in the snow all day. Or I'd go shovel snow in people's driveways and make a little extra money. Snowball fights. And we built some snow forts and things you probably do when you drive the snow. But then when I got older, hang on one second. I... Yes, I will invite you right now. So Mr. Lyons is going to be on with us today, our principal. So just watch anything you say that may not be appropriate. You guys never say anything that's inappropriate anyway. We never do, but just kind of giving you a heads up. He's just watching Mr. Brustel's teaching skills. All right, let me get back to the meeting. And I think we're all here. I'm missing one person, Mr. Holden. Okay, he might pop in. Fantastic, I really appreciate you guys all being on time. And punctual is just something you will carry on in your life for the rest as, as you go on. It's something that's important, it's a habit. Um, I told you I live across the street from my high school. And I was actually late to school every day. It's something I'm not proud of, but um, I would get up at six, no, 7.20. And I had to be at school at 7.30. And I was always running across the street at 7.30 when I should, I should have been sitting in my seat five, 10 minutes early. <sighs> Excuse me. So um, living close doesn't even do anything. It's, your, it's a habit. And being punctual, being on, on time, being early is such an important quality. And I'm, I'm really glad to see most of you guys we're here on time, so thank you. And I make a note of it on my on my attendance here. I make OT on time. All right, we're gonna be covering lift safety. So I'm gonna wait for Mr. Lyons here to get in here. Um, so I'm gonna be doing, we're gonna have some activities. I, I got it really full of a lot of stuff. Um, I've got some Ed puzzle. I got a little video in there with a few questions. You know how that works, we've done that before. I've got some poll everywhere. I don't know if you've done that before with other teachers, but they're, they're kind of fun. I have a Kahoot it in there as well. Um, what else do I got? And then I have some other, I think there's a couple other little activities. Kahoot it, let me see, Ed Puzzle, Poll Everywhere, there's a video in there. Okay, so I threw some really fun, some fun stuff in there. So we're gonna keep we're gonna keep it moving and we're gonna keep it grooving, all right, till the end of the period, everybody. Okay. So Mr. Lyons, we were just talking about my sister back in New Jersey, and I was showing them pictures of the snowstorm. Can you see that? That's crazy. And that got they got two feet. And I was telling them how I grew up with that. Um, and we have snow days. And we had to call in and uh, see if there was going to be any school that day because there was no cell phones and they didn't have the, the calling like they like they do today. Like they just send a mass call out. They didn't have that, everybody. So you had to just listen on the radio. It was a specific channel on the radio and you would just sit by the radio at like 6 a.m. in the morning and then they would just run down this school and this district, this school, this school, this school, no school. And you'd be just like, yeah. Um, I'm playing in the snow all day and then you just be gone out playing and sledding and snowball fights and everything else. So um, it was really fun until I started working in it. And then I used to work out there. I actually used to be a, a meter maid and I was a police fire dispatcher for our local police department. So the police fire dispatcher was kind of fun and a lot of action. Uh, but then when I moved on to a meter maid or a traffic control officer, um, that was interesting because I was out there when it was 20 below with the wind blowing and I had so many layers on that I could barely move. Um, and there's no restrooms. I had, I had to walk all the way back into the police department, which was usually about a, a mile. 
a mile and a half from downtown. So I would have to find a, a, a bathroom, usually the railroad station, and use the bathroom. And oh my gosh, with five layers on, that was that was a job. So I would end up holding it a lot of times. But and I would duck into little stores here and there. Um, it was interesting. Rainy days, uh, you just out there in the rain. You just have a cover of plastic on on you, and you just walk around. And I would give tickets for overtime meters. I would give tickets if somebody stayed in the parking lot too long or a spot too long. And I actually loved the job. I really wanted to become a police officer was, was my goal, but I was only 19. So they couldn't hire me as a police officer yet. So they hired me as a traffic control officer. So I would direct traffic out there in the middle of the street. Um, that was kind of scary. You, know, you have to stand out there in the middle of the street with your orange gloves, basically put your hand up and hopefully somebody doing 40, 45 miles an hour is going to see you and stop. Uh, which they usually did. So that usually wasn't a problem, but I'll have to tell you a little funny story and then we'll get going. So I used to do uh, school crossings, not always the same one. So one was by the high school and I would stand right by the light and then I would push the button, you know, the push the button to cross the street. So I'd push the button once, I, I'd put it on manual, had a special key. So when I push the button once, it would go from green to yellow and then I'd wait a few seconds, right? And I'd push the button, button again, and it would go from yellow to red. So it would slow the traffic coming so the kids would cross. So when the kids would cross and they'd all be across, and I would push the button again, and it would go from red to green. So that, that, was, that was kind of fun. I kind of made them some, some mistakes sometimes. I would hit the button too fast. <laughs> it's, good. it's really funny because it would go, it would go green, Yellow, red, really fast, but it wasn't. It wasn't the people driving fault. They weren't driving too fast. I just hit the button too fast, and people go through red lights, and you'd see them like looking around, like, "Oh my gosh, I just ran a red light!" But it was it was totally my fault. And then on rainy days, there was a puddle that would actually be right there by the light switch, and it was I couldn't not stand there. I had to stand there because I had to work the button. So when people and they had to go by, there was no room, there was no shoulder, so they had to go by. So they would hit this puddle, and when they hit the puddle it would just splash all over me like, you know, three gallons of water. And I couldn't move because I had to work the button. And people just got the biggest kick out of it because they thought they were just splashing a regular police officer. And, you know, they weren't doing anything wrong. They were just driving. And they would hit that puddle and just splash me. And they'd be running down my face. And they'd be laughing their heads off as they drove by. And it's just like, <laughs> just like the highlight of their day. So some interesting stories. I'll tell you some more as we go along. All right, we're going to be going into... Um, Lift safety. Okay, guys, I'm going to share my screen for my presentation. Hey, I'm going to move you. There we go. Okay. So let me share. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah, we can see that. Everybody's got it? Okay. So remember I told you I got a lot of stuff in here. So hopefully all the connections and links are going to work, but I got some backups if they if they don't work too. Okay. All right. So this is our actual our book that we're going to be using. We have the digital copy of right now. This is Modern Automotive Technology. This is the 10th edition. Uh, it's the handouts and the worksheets I've given you have been from the 9th edition. So we'll be getting, actually this says 9th, but I just got the 10th one in the mail. So it looks just like this, but the car's not red. I actually like the red car better. Um, so just to kind of give you an, an idea of what the book looks like. Okay, so we're talking about automotive lift safety. So that's chapter five in the book. All right, and I want to show you guys so, some of these pictures I showed you when I did a little a little introduction to me. Um, so I just used these last night. That was my Previ over here. This is my first minivan I have when my girls were born. Um, I wanted to show you here. These are some of the lifts, if you can kind of see those. This is La Habra High School, where I taught for 12 years. There's an above ground twin post lift here. There's another in ground one here. You can't see it. Actually, you can see it right here. Okay, uh, there's two pistons that are in ground. One is here and one is here. So that's one nice thing about an in-ground lift is when it, it's down, it doesn't take up very much space in the shop at all. Um, but these two pistons were worked separately from each other. So when you're raising the vehicle, you had to make sure you raised one at the same time you're raising the other. If you didn't, then the vehicle would be going up this way or that way. And if a student wasn't paying attention, it was a little scary. So they actually eventually ended up taking this out and we put another above ground lift in. 
And what's nice about these above ground lifts is that you can just, they're three pieces and they just bolt right into the ground. And then, so if anything ever happens, you need to replace the lift or maybe they should move the class. You can just unbolt that, those three pieces, it takes a couple hours and then you can move this lift somewhere else. And then servicing this lift is, is very easy too because everything's exposed. It's all right there above the ground. But if you take a look, it really kind of restricts how much movement you have throughout the shop. I mean, look at this open spot right here and then look at how much space this lift takes up. And there's another one right next to it. So you can't move the cars around as easily. You can't walk around as easily. And you have these arms that are hanging out that you, people trip over all the time. Um, but there's good points. They actually, when they service this one, they decided to fill it in and not use it. This back piston was the problem. It was leaking and they actually dug down this big spot right here. Can everybody see my cursor okay? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, yeah. that spot right there, they had to dig down with a backhoe and they went down 12 feet to find out where the leak was in this piston that would come out of the ground. And they found out that you know it was too expensive to fix it. So they ended up just filling it in and taking it out. So just to show you some of the different um, classes that we've had and different lifts that I had. There's, there's, here's that little funny one. I think I've shown you guys. I was just having fun. We, had, we did some wash, washing and waxing and detailing it was part of auto tech. It's the whole, you know, restoring and rejuvenating your car. And one of the kids wanted to take a little picture and get a little shine on my head. You know, it's always kind of a funny thing, you know, when you don't have any hair, you know, I go along with it. So this is a little flyer that we put around the school to try and get kids more interested in, uh, in taking the class, just, just to know you're having fun. Okay, so the objectives for today are going to be identifying hoisting and lifting equipment. I did some right now. Safety procedures related to hoisting or lifting. Okay, that's important. It, always, that's the main priority is always, always, always being safe. Uh, how to lift a vehicle, the proper methods, okay? To lift the vehicle safely and to make sure you check it and recheck it and only lift it partially and shake it and everything else. And then also how do you pick the best lift for the type of job that you're gonna be doing, okay? There's several different types of lifts out there. You have to think as a technician that, okay, I'm gonna do a transmission job Okay, then I need to have a lift that's out of the way of where the transmission is. So that piston lift that I was showing you where I had one in the front and one in the back wouldn't work if, if that piston's gonna be underneath the transmission. So you gotta stop and think about your job and doing it safely and efficiently. Okay, I'm gonna play a quick video for you, okay? So this is what happens if you don't have the vehicle on there correctly and you're not working safely. Can everybody hear that okay? Yeah, I can hear it. Okay. Yeah. There's nobody in that car.
Wow. I watched this one. Oh, you didn't. Okay. They cut it early. past this all right so i want you guys to do right now is write down 10 things you need to do before during and after lifting a vehicle so include lifts and floor jacks so if you put a vehicle up on a floor jack and then put it on jack stands okay so just write down 10 things that come to mind what do you got to do before you lift a vehicle okay you may be able to get 10 just get as many as you can Okay, so just take, just take a couple minutes here. All right, it's 1040. I'm gonna give you like about 90 seconds. So 10 things, what would you need to do? I'm gonna kind of help you a little bit, okay? No, you don't need to put it in the chat. Just kind of write it down on a piece of paper, all right? And then we're gonna move on to a different activity that we're gonna use that information, we're gonna build on it. Okay, so just write down 10 things that you can come up with that, what would you do before? So before, obviously you wanna make sure that, okay, before you lift a vehicle that maybe it's straight on the lift where it should be, where you can get the lift arms where you need to get the arms, right? So if there's a wheel chalk in the ground, maybe is that front tire in the wheel chalk is it in front of it? Is it behind it? Depending on how long the wheelbase of the vehicle is, right? So getting it positioned is one, okay? So that's, I'm giving you a little clue there. And then during your lifting it, wanna make sure obviously they're not underneath it in case something falls. Things, vehicles do fall as you saw in the, in the video. It's best if you're not underneath it. It's terrible the cars get damaged, but we don't want you being damaged. So here's another one. Don't be under the car during. And then how about after? Here's one for after. Um, make sure that everything is put back where it should be and the arms are in place so you don't drive over those arms. I've seen students do that with their own cars. They forgot the arms were still extended and they actually drove over it with their car and that'll do some damage to the end of the car or maybe even the suspension or alignment. So I'll give you three, okay? So you guys come up with seven others. Okay, I'm trying to stimulate your minds a little bit. Okay, we got about 60 seconds. Do we put this in chat? No, you're gonna use it here in just a second. So just write it down. Just give me 10, try to remember three major ones, okay? If you don't have a piece of paper there, which you should have a piece of paper, okay? If you don't have something to write on, just remember three major ones, not the ones I gave you, of course the three other ones.
think next time I'll put some music in here. Some uh, Jeopardy timing timer music. That's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. Everybody know everybody watch Jeopardy? Yeah. Yeah. Kind yeah. of sad. Sad about Alex Trebek. He actually did his last show, I think, 10 days before he passed away. Man, the guy was just stayed with it. God bless him. Okay, 10 seconds. Get down three major ones, okay? Just at least three major ones. If you're just like pumping along and you got 10, 12, and you're, you can keep going, go ahead. Okay, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so we're done with this. All right, so we're gonna do the poll everywhere here. And I think I'm gonna to have to take it off here and let me activate it. Okay, so it's already activated. All right, so at the top there, you can go to pollev.com forward slash John B340, okay? And I want you to put in your two best answers. And they should come up right here. Okay. pollev.com forward slash John B340. And then give put in your two best answers. Everybody having, is, there, is it working okay? Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay, that's a great one. I know you guys are all Thumbelinas, so I'm sure you can punch it in really fast on your phone or type it in your on your keyboard. Good, shake the vehicle, perfect. Okay, I only see two, there we go. Okay, fantastic. I know there's 11 of you out there. Come on, let's get let's let's get some more answers. Thank you. Okay, make sure that the ground is level. Wonderful. Make sure the vehicle's stable. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about that. Let's see if we can get one more and then we'll start talking about these. So this is a kind of, this is like a discussion board. This is a kind of a fun way of everybody can see what some of the other students are, are thinking. And you can even do this when we're, we get back in live too. Okay, and it's using your technology with, we're also attached to, um, but even doing it in the room is, is, is really neat too. Okay, you can stop and you can use your phone for educational purposes and to learn. So let's start talking. Let's start talking about this. So parking brake, uh, you want to make sure that's on. Okay. Sometimes you make sure it's on. Sometimes you don't. If you're doing something that involves the rear brakes, um, or maybe you're adjusting the parking brake, and it has to be off off the ground for that and up in the air, you can't have your brake on for that. So it would be basically in neutral, and the brake would be off. Okay. Uh, 
then when you, you lift the vehicle, and it's usually flat where there's ever a lift, it's completely flat, so it's not gonna roll away. Then there's usually a wheel chalk. But then sometimes you do make sure the brake is on. So it depends on the type of lift you're doing, using and the kind of work you're doing, okay? Uh, so make sure it's all stable it completely. You have to make sure it's stable. Uh, make sure it's in the correct position as well. There, uh, we were, actually I was doing a demo, this is several years ago, doing an all change demo. No, actually, I think I was just pointing to a few things under the car and I had about 10 kids under the car and I, I reached up and I shook something and then one of the saddles kind of repositioned on the lift point. So it actually moved, the vehicle actually dropped down onto the saddle. It didn't fall, it just moved down onto the saddle about an inch or two, right? And I had about 10 kids under the car that were all watching my flashlight and where I was pointing in the demonstration that I was doing. And they scattered from under this car, like if you turned on a light in the kitchen and you had a problem with cockroaches, right? Cockroaches hate, hate light and they're just gonna scatter really fast. These kids scattered, never saw them move so fast. And then me, I'm standing there, like I'm gonna try and lift it. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing? I, I should have been running like everybody else. And I'm, I'm like trying to lift it. So I, I'm gonna try to save the kids if the car comes down. So if it does happen, you gotta make sure you shake that car, get it up six inches off the ground and, and shake it. And there was another student that was lift, lifting a car. This is years ago again, you know, cause I've had thousands of kids come through my classes and he was using, um, a lift and he had it too far forward. He wasn't looking at the center of gravity of the vehicle. And we're gonna talk about that. Where's the center of gravity? If it's a front wheel car, it's gonna have a different center of gravity than if it's a real wheel drive car, right? Cause you have the differential in the back, right? If it's front wheel drive, everything's in the front, transmission, transactional, everything's there. So almost your weight is there. So the center of gravity shifts closer to the front. Rear wheel drive, it moves more towards the middle and then you have a rear, a rear engine car, like a Porsche or a Corvair, or maybe a uh, Volkswagen, and the, the center of gravity now moves again. So you have to make sure you take that all into consideration and the load that you have in the car or the truck. Does it have toolboxes on it or utility boxes? What's in those boxes? Is there things that are in the bed of the pickup that you have to take into consideration? And what's the weight of the vehicle too? We're gonna to talk about that. So these are all great things, placement of the vehicle, right? Make sure the car is stable, okay? shake it, we get it up six inches and we shake it because in California, maybe not so much here, I'm not aware of, but I know down by us, we have earthquakes um, and they'll, they'll kind of get to shaking and you don't want that vehicle shaking when you're underneath it and then something happening. So you want to make sure you shake it when it's just six inches off the ground and then have it shift. Okay, so great answers, everybody. Nice, nice job. Thanks for the participation. All right, so here's a floor jack. This is the easiest way to lift a vehicle that you might have at home. I always have a floor jack. You can pick these up at, at Home Depot. On sale, you get a floor jack and two jack stands for like, I think I got mine for like under $100. And I think it's a two or three ton floor jack. So two tons is 4,000 pounds, which is plenty of lifting ability for, for most cars. You only lift half the vehicle at a time, You're not lifting the whole vehicle. And most cars are about 4,000 pounds, 5,000 pounds. So if it's a two ton, and you're only lifting half, right? So you only need to have really maybe uh, 2,000 top, you know, lifting capacity. And this is the two tons gonna be 4,000 pounds of capacity. So it's plenty, okay? So these really work well. You just can't work under a car that's been supported by these and not have, not have jack stands. Here's a vehicle supported by jack stands. You get it up, you put it on jack stands and then you get underneath it, okay? You don't ever get underneath a car that just is supported by a floor jack. Um, there was a guy actually a couple months ago on the news down, down in Orange County. He was under a car and the jack slowly came down and you know, he didn't know it until it was basically on top of his chest. So he could still breathe, but he couldn't slide out from under the car. It was kind of holding him. And um, they actually had to call the fire department in to use airbags to lift it back up again because the, the jack had failed and they couldn't lift it off him. So they used these special airbags to lift it and they got him out, but he, he was fine. His wife was able to go out there and see what the problem was and take care of it. Okay, here's creepers. This is what you would use to roll under the car after you got the vehicle up in the air. You can kind of shimmy on your back, but 
that's not a really efficient way to kind of move around under the car. So if you're going to use one of these, it elevates you probably two or three inches, unless you do the ones that are, are concave, where they're like really special low profile. Um, it's still going to elevate you a little bit, but just so you can roll around and move around underneath the vehicle, because you're going to be on your back. You can't walk underneath it because you're using a jack stand. Okay, so we have another activity here. Okay. What type of vehicle lift is found? And let me make sure, hang on, I'm gonna make sure this is on. Let me go back to my... Okay, so it's already on, perfect. All right, so again, you're gonna to go to Pole Everywhere P-O-L-L-E-V.com, same thing. What type of vehicle lift is found in most auto repair shops? So this one you're gonna kind of pick. So pick from the pictures. Okay, good, we got, we got some answers. Nope, not yet. Okay, so this is changing. You guys are changing. So that's, that's, that's good. This is supposed to be kind of like exploring. Okay. This is pretty easy. You just got to pick. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this while you're doing this. All right, so this is actually correct, right? The one on top, that's called a twin post above ground lift. That's like I was showing you at my old schools I used to teach at. This is what we have four of here in, this, in the classroom. So that is the one that's found most most times out there in the shop, it's very easy to install. It runs about five to seven thousand dollars. It's very easy to work on. Um, so you will find this the most out there, but it also takes up the, almost a lot of space. Okay, the one below it, the drive-on lift, that actually takes up more space. Now uh, you can see it's four points where it's got to be actually bolted to the ground. But you have to have this kind of lift if you're doing wheel alignment. You have to have the whole car up completely stable, okay, and up on this lift, and you have to put the actual targets on the wheels. And it has to be on one of these to get a correct wheel alignment. So for wheel alignment, you have to have this. For most wheel alignment machines, not all of them, but so a drive-on lift is very prevalent out there as well, but it does take up a lot of space. The third one, the biggest place you're gonna see that, and probably one of the biggest tire places is Costco. Costco uses these kinds of lifts. Um, they're just, they, they come in one big metal apparatus. Okay, that one you see there in the picture is, is it's like a cantilever. So it's kind of like a, like, a, like a seesaw kind of. When it's flat, it's very, very low profile. And then it can actually be moved around. I had one where you could actually move it around. It had like a, like a little tow bar on it. You could jack it up and you could move it around and it, and it would actually hold a good amount of weight is very portable. You could put it in your garage. It only lifts it the amount of feet there you see, just so you can do tires and maybe some light brake work. You can't do anything. It's transmission because the lift is in the way. You can't do anything with the muffler. Again, the lift's in the way. So it just kind of restricts what you're able to work on. But this is perfect for tire shops. It's very easy to put in. It's very easy to work on. It's very easy to replace. Um, it is hard on the technician's back because it doesn't raise the vehicle all the way up in the air where you can just stand normally and then take the tires on and off. But also the technician isn't bending over as much to bring the tire down to the ground and from the ground back onto the car. So you might have probably less back injuries with something like this. So maybe you're, on, you're sitting on a rolling creeper and you can do it that way and that's less strain on your back. The fourth one is a, is a single piston in ground lift that comes up and then you have like an X like this and you move the arms, okay? Like this, you move them in and out to lift on the four points of the car, okay? There's a lot of shops that have these. One of the problems with these was 
they work with oil. Air pushes the oil in to lift the piston. And then what would happen is over the years, the oil would leak and then it would get into the ground and contaminate all the ground around where that lift is. And then you have to have the whole thing dug out and all the contaminated dirt dug out. So they're still putting these in now, but they put them in a special box and a special barrier where if they ever do leak, it doesn't go past where that oil is supposed to be. And working on these is kind of hard too because everything's down in the ground. So it gets a little expensive, but when they're down the ground, it's completely out of the way and you can maneuver around the shop much, much easier. And then that one last one, the fifth one is a twin piston in ground lift. Okay, and shops do use those as well. Okay, so if they put these in ground lifts in, they're still using them. They're not gonna get rid of them. Okay, um, they're still gonna use those, but if they're gonna add any, they don't normally add the in ground ones, they add the above ground ones, like you see on one, two, and three. Okay, nice job with you guys. All right, so here's, here's some, okay, that we didn't, we looked at. There's the picture of the one that's kind of like, like cantilever. I like when it raises up, these arms go kind of like, a, like an angle. They go, they're flat and they go like this. Okay, it's all hydraulic. There's the twin post again. Okay, dual piston in ground. This one's a little different. This is from the side. The other one was from the front and the back. And then there's the drive on one. So, um, and what's the rating on these? In ground ones usually hold much more because you have that big, huge metal piston with all the oil it's lifting. And that can usually lift more than these above ground ones. If the above ground ones are over, you know, they're using too much weight on it, you lift the vehicle, they actually sometimes will collapse and they'll buckle in and tear out of the ground. So, but you can buy a heavy duty one. It's actually a picture I came across when I was finding some of these pictures. It had buses that actually use these kind of lifts. They're huge, but they can actually still lift buses. Okay, so this is a rotary lift. This is probably one of the most popular, heavy duty, um, most reliable lifts that, that are out there. They're, they're a little more expensive than some of the other brands, but this one is, has a very, very good reputation. So I wanna play this video. I'm Steve McClellan. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to operate your rotary two post lift. Before using your lift, always inspect it ensuring that it's in good operating condition. And check that the vehicle's individual axle weight does not exceed half of the lift's capacity. Now, drive into the bay, centering the vehicle between the posts. Make sure that the left front wheel is properly positioned on the spotting dish. Details on the spotting dish, position on the spotting dish. Okay, see that spotting dish? They always put that in. That's, that's how you can tell where you're at on the lift. So you don't have to have somebody standing in front of you, a spotter, like that one guy that got hit. Okay, you don't need that when you're doing, you have this. You need to put your tire right in that. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah. all right. So you can, you put your tire right in that and then we wouldn't be doing this normally, you guys, like this. I'd be in the shop demonstrating this for you and showing you. Um, I don't think they have these wheel chocks on the ground out here. It's something we're gonna probably add. So if you have a very short wheelbase and by wheelbase, I mean the distance from the front tires to the back tires, Right. If you have something that's short, like maybe a mini, a mini car, um, those smart cars are probably way on the way, 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 way small. But you have a, like maybe a little Mazda convertible. The distance from the front tires and the back tires is really short. So you would pull probably where the tire is right now. If you have a normal car, everyday car, you're going to be right in it. If you got something that's extended, like a pickup truck, right, uh, extended cab pickup truck or a really long uh, excursion or suburban or a Yukon or a navigator or something, you're probably going to have your tire in front of the wheel chalk. And that changes it, its position in the lift. So when you move your arms out, you can get all four lifting points. Details on the spotting dish positions can be found on the lift and in the owner's manual. Next, check that the correct adapters are being used. RA adapters for unibody vehicles, TA adapters for frames, or flip up adapters for either. Then move the swing arms under the vehicle and position the adapters at the manufacturer's recommended lifting points. Extensions can be used to help reach the lifting points. points. See that? On unibody cars, it's gonna show you, there's gonna be a designation of here's where you lift. A unibody car does not have a frame. Okay, the body of the car is the frame. It is 
um, there's no like a, like a van or a pickup truck or a big SUV has a, a big frame and the body comes down and bolts onto it. So you can lift anywhere you want on the frame. As a matter of fact, you don't want to lift on the body. Okay. Cause if you lift on the body, you're going to bend the body because all the weight is on the chassis and the frame. So if you lift on the body, you're just lifting on the light body part of the vehicle that's bolted to the frame. So on unibody cars, they actually show you, there's where you put the saddle, has to go right there. Your floor jack has to go right there. When you lower the vehicle on jack stands, the jack stand has to go right there. If you lift on a different spot, because the body is, is the frame, you could bend the car. You can actually bend the vehicle. So you gotta make sure you, you hit that and they put arrows there for you it's usually in the owner's manual, but if you have to get down on your hands and knees to take a look at this to make sure you're getting this. Extensions can be used to help reach the lifting points and to keep the vehicle level while lifting. Now, push the button on the power unit to raise the arms until adapters make contact with the vehicle's lifting points. Then, slightly lift the vehicle until the wheels are off the ground. Once the wheels are off the floor, ensure that the vehicle is level. Then go to the front or rear of the vehicle and rock it up and down to make sure it is stable on the lift. See where he pushed? He pushed on the front bumper. I've seen a technician push on that and the bumper will actually almost come off. These bumpers are made to detach from the vehicle when they get in accidents. They, they're, they're made to come off. There's only plastic um, clips that kind of hold all that on. If you've ever had like a minor fender bender, in a car like this, and most of the bumpers are like this, those clips break and the bumper will just kind of fall off. Okay, you can put it back on, you have to get the clips, but that's why a lot of times you see bumpers on the side of the freeway from accidents, they just come off. Um, so you have to be careful as a technician, if you push too hard, you actually can possibly snap some of those clips and those clips can be expensive. Um, if you're the Ford dealer and it's a Ford car, it won't cost that much. Okay, you might get a little warning, but if you're a, a Ford dealer and you're working on a Toyota car, okay, you got to go back to Toyota to get it. And some of those clips are $10 a piece and plus all the time of getting it back on. So I would be care. I wouldn't push right there. I would actually pop the hood or I would actually push on the tire right there. Don't push on the fender. Anybody know why you don't want to push on the fender? The fender is right here. Why would you want to push on that? You could possibly bend it. Yeah, you can dent it. The metal on these cars is extremely thin. Um, I had a, a, a broom fall over on my two, my van I drive, my 2000 Toyota Sienna. A, a broom fell over in the garage and hit the fender. And it's, it's 21 years old. And it put a dent in the fender just from a broom hitting it. So, And today, they're, they're, this is 21 years later, they're even thinner. They're, they're trying to keep the weight of the vehicles down so you get better gas mileage. And they're trying to use less metal because it, so it costs less to manufacture. So um, just be careful where you push because if you, if you dent somebody's fender, <laughs> they're gonna be coming back. Okay, you know, your technician did this, you, know, you, you guys are gonna take care of it? Yeah, of course you have to. Now, raise the lift to the desired height. Hear those, you hear those clicks? Everybody hear those clicks? About every three inches, two, three inches? Yeah. Those are emergency latches, okay? So as the vehicle goes up, the latches fall down, okay? And then the next row will fall down, okay? So if you should lose hydraulics in this, remember this is an electric pump. You can see it right there. It's pushing everything that's in that black square thing into the hydraulic cylinders to lift this vehicle. But if something fails, right, it's not gonna slam down on you. It's gonna to start to come down slowly as the liquid leaks out because a hose maybe is broken or a seal is broken. It will come down onto those safety latches. So um, that's a normal sound as they go up. And then you actually are supposed to bring the vehicle back down after you got it to the height you want, you settle it down on the safety latches and you don't leave it supported by just the hydraulics you always lower it to its locks by pushing the down lever. There you go. To lower the vehicle, first raise it off its locks. You gotta bring it back up off the locks. Then 
pull down and hold the lock release. There you go. While pushing the down lever. For a comprehensive guide on auto lift safety, visit ALI's website at autolift.org. And for more information on rotary products, visit us at rotarylift.com. Great video. Um, hang on, let me go off here and move past this. That's a great video. And Rotary is a huge manufacturer. They're, they're very uh, well liked. Uh, those are about four to $5,000. We don't have a Rotary here. No, we have uh, some kind of off brands, but they're still good. They're still fine, um, but they work exactly the same way. We have four of them and everybody's gonna be doing five cars, okay? Five cars, and then I will get you a certificate of competency, or I'll put that line on the back of your certificate saying that you are competent in the ability to lift vehicles. So that's only gonna be on above ground twin post lifts, right? So I wish we had different kinds of lifts here, but we don't, we, all, we have the same four, uh, but we do have different brands and they do work a little differently, but uh, five, after you do something five times, that means you're getting pretty good at it. It's like tying your shoe, right? When you tied your shoe and you get, did it five times, you're like starting to get a little cocky, like, hey mom, I got this, right? Well, you're not a pro yet where you could actually train people, but you're pretty good at it, okay? All right, so this is under the car looking up. This is different lift points um, that you'll have for different cars, okay? So the one in the lower left-hand corner is a frame vehicle, there's a frame. So you see the yellow squares, that's where you're gonna make contact with the frame, okay? So they show you, that's, those are the spots. You can, is, are the wheels a lifting point? Yes, if you drive on a drive-on lift, you're lifting with the wheels of the car because the whole car is on the lift. Right. So this is all color coded. Uh, the pink is where you would put safety stands. OK. And the green is where you would put um, like an in-ground lift. Like I was showing you, like those those piston lifts. OK. That goes on the green spots, the control arms for the suspension, the differential, right, the casing for the differential. So every car you lift, your car, your mom and dad's car, cars, your service, are all gonna have different spots to lift on. And you as a technician have to know that. And you'll get really good at this. A car will pull in, you're like, unibody, I know that. Oh, I've lifted 10 of these, I've lifted 20 of these. You know you know exactly where to kneel down, you know what type of saddle to use, what to flip up to make contact with, you'll, you'll know. But in the beginning, you're not gonna know and you have to get down on your hands and knees, knees and sometimes like you're doing a push up and put your chest on the ground and you've got to take a look to find those little arrows or those X's or those little notches to show you where the lift spots are. But you have to make sure you take time to do this or you're going to damage somebody's car. Okay, now let me just put it back on you. What if this is your car that you spent 20 or $30,000 for and you're taking it into a shop? Do you want the technician to make sure he's lifting it correctly? Of course, or do you, do you want to find damage down the road? You know, people like will bring cars into our high school shop and we lift it up and I'll let them take a walk underneath sometimes just so they can see something so I can show them where something's leaking or something I have to replace. And all of a sudden we see some damage that happened maybe a year or six months previous from another shop that they didn't see because it was under the car and nobody told them. So you got to make sure you lift properly and in the right spots. Okay, so setting the pads. Very, very critical, we just talked about that. Okay, there's gonna be like a little triangle, okay, on the um, little marker on the car itself. Okay, you'll see that on where the lift points are. The owner's manual will tell you exactly, you know, where, where to lift the car, depending on what kind of lift you're using, all right? Um, so it's, it's usually right, it's right there, okay? What if I wanna find the weight of the vehicle, okay? To make sure I'm not over the load of the lift. It's gonna be on, a decal on the driver's door and it says GVWR, gross vehicle weight ratio. That's a total weight of the car, right? So if the, the lift is rated at 8,000 pounds and the car's 5,000 pounds or 4,300, you're good. If it's a pickup truck, right? And the vehicle's rated for 8,000 and you got 7,000 pounds is what the vehicle weighs, right? Well, you got a thousand of you know, leeway there, a thousand pounds, but what if there's maybe some sandbags or something or tools that are in the bed of the pickup truck? Okay, it might be 500 or 800 pounds. Mm -mm, you can't use that lift, you're, you're pushing it to the max. Find a different lift or tell, uh, tell them you, you can't lift it or to remove what's in it and then come back. Don't you try to remove it 
then you're responsible if you hurt yourself or if you damage anything, okay? Just tell me, you know what, I can't lift this safely. I'm, um, you're gonna have to maybe take out what's in it and then bring it back. It's, it's worth it to let that customer go than to possibly have an injury to yourself or to the vehicle, okay? So make sure you center it. They talked about that, left to right, okay? Front to back, depending if, if it's what kind of car it is, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, rear engine vehicle, okay? Um, move the arms out, okay? And then you move those saddles up. Some of them unscrew, some of them flip up, okay? Because sometimes the lifting point's gonna kind of be up in there and the body is going to come down lower than the the arms, right? So I have to get that that spot up there. It's up in there, but the body of the vehicle comes down. So I have to make sure I have an arm that will come up and make contact with that. But then the lift arm won't hit the body of the vehicle and, and bend that. So that's why you have those different sizes of flip-ups, right? Some are really big, some are small, some are just flat. Some unscrew, okay? So you have to make sure you make contact with the lifting spot but you don't hit the body of the vehicle. So on unibody cars, you lift on the body. That's a given. But if you have a frame car, you don't want to touch the body at all. You want to get that frame without touching it. Anybody got any questions? No. No, this is pretty hard to do, um, you know, via virtual, but, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can here. So hopefully you're getting it. So when we, when we come back in person, and I'm always gonna talk from a positive standpoint like we are, okay? Um, so, you know what? We might be a little disappointed if we don't, but I'm gonna just kind of like assume that we are and I'm kind of hoping that we do. I'll go back over this and I'll do a demo on the, on the list where you guys kind of stand out there and, and watch me do it. And then I'm gonna stand back and watch you do it, okay? And we're gonna use these shop cars. So if something does happen and the vehicle falls, you know what? It's not a big deal. You're not gonna be underneath it, okay? something gets damaged, nobody owns those cars, school owns the cars. They're never gonna go back on the road again. I'm not saying intentionally do something or don't give a crud while you're doing it. It's just important that you, um, you know, you practice on something and you make your mistakes on something that's not gonna be expensive or gonna cause anybody any issues, okay? Shake the vehicle once you get it off the ground, six inches. Okay, give it a vigorous shake. Like I told you, I probably didn't shake it hard enough for that one car that actually like adjusted when we were underneath it. Man, that, that scared the crap out of me, okay? I, I, I was just like, it took me a good 30 minutes to kind of regain myself because I thought that car was coming down. And there's nothing you can do. The car falls on you, you're pretty much dead, okay? Um, may, maybe you might be lucky where you're only crippled. And I remember driving home, this is probably 15 years ago, from work, actually teaching automotive at, at night. And uh, a guy in South Orange County, he actually owned the shop. He was an automotive shop owner. He was working on his pickup truck after hours and the pickup truck fell off the lift and killed him. And they had to get a tow vehicle in there to get the car off of him, get the truck off of him so they could remove the body. I'm just like, I mean, talk about all things. Who should know about lifting cars? The shop owner, of course, he owns the shop. He's not even a technician. The guy's probably got years and years. Mistakes happen. Just be real, real, real careful at all times, okay? So here's a little picture of, of setting those pads. This is obviously a, a frame type vehicle. So they're getting up there and getting the frame with the with the rubber, okay? There's another part right there. Does that look correct right there where they have that, that high jack stand? Take a look at that. That almost doesn't look correct to me. Right, thanks, Alexis. Okay, that looks like that could be the radiator or maybe something, yeah, because I see these cooling lines from the transmission that are coming over here. That could be the radiator. It looks like it's solid, but the radiator is basically like a tin can. Um, and if you try and put any weight on it, it's just gonna collapse, okay? This is the frame. You can see that's the frame right there. We can see this is the frame. We can see this is the frame over here. This is the frame. We can see it's heavy duty, heavy gauge metal. Um, that's where that should be over there. But you know, this is an angle too. So you have to make sure it doesn't slip off of that. We couldn't put it here. We probably have to put it right underneath. Oh, sorry. Probably have to put it right underneath here or actually maybe over, over here, over here. 
Okay, so we, I just ordered two of these. These are if you want to hold something up in the vehicle underneath it. So you're, you're going to take the transmission out or you're going to take something out and you want to stabilize it. Okay, here's another one. Okay, this does happen. Um, you know what? Technicians get to moving fast. And we're going to talk about this when we talk about repair orders. Okay, time is money. The faster you go, the more money you make. If you do a four hour job in two hours, you still get paid for four. It's called flat rate. Okay, they don't put you on that when you get started because you're gonna be slow at everything. You've never done that job on that car. But after you've done 10 Honda Civic, you know, whatever the job is over and over and over again, man, you're getting pretty good at that job. You still will get paid for four, even though you can do it in two. So you start moving fast and sometimes you don't, you know, do what's safe. You just, you just kind of skip it. And that's what happens. And these are, are attachments that go on the saddles. Okay. Some screw, right. But see this, see this big extension. See, this is the body. This is the frame. Okay. I got to make sure I extend that lift point up in there to get that without the arm hitting the body. Okay. Very important. Cause then you get this that happens. Okay. We see that. All right, so the arm is hitting the body before it's actually making contact with the lift point. Okay, and this one actually unscrews, but they didn't have it unscrewed enough. Okay, um, this might be plastic. So you back that back down, it's gonna just, you know, go back to its original shape. Okay, it may not, that might be metal. Okay, now, now you're on the line to fix that and you have to fix that. Any kind of damage like this to metal on a car, like that, you're talking a thousand dollars. Okay, and you're like, what, Mr. Boo? What are you talking about? Thousand dollars? No, no, no. That, that, just bang that right out. Yeah. Okay. We bang it out. The paint comes off. Oh, oh. Okay. We'll just throw some touch-up paint on it. No, it, it paint's chipped. You got to you got to straighten the metal back out, and you have to use a puller because that's in a really bad area, right? You can't take the fender off and straighten it out with a hammer and a dolly. You got to pull that out. Okay. So you got to drill holes and use a puller, or put mag, you know, welding studs on it and use a slide hammer pull to pull it out. You got to put filler on it. You got to sand it down, make sure it's completely smooth, sand it. Okay. And then you got to prime it. And then you got to paint that whole part. You just can't spot paint. Okay. You're talking a thousand dollars. So trust me. Okay. I know what I'm talking about. Here's a real easy way. I don't like these. People use these. What happens if you drive over them? Okay. Um, you know, sometimes they're not as small as this. They're, and you drive over them, you know what, and cars are low, then it gets stuck under there. I don't know. Um, it just kind of scares me. It's like driving over the pit, you know, that, that one car that you saw where it drove over the pit and fell into the pit. You know, that that technician shouldn't have let that person, and we talked about that earlier, I showed you that same, the same video, that technician should have never let that person, the owner, drive the car. He should have been driving the car because he, he knows how to handle it in and off the lift. That was, that's his fault. So these are a different way if you want to get the car up and you don't have a floor jack. Okay, got a little cahooted activity. Okay, so we're going to do this. Okay, so let's play. I'm going to hit play here. So let's see what happens. I don't know if anybody's played cahooted or not. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna go classic. There you go. Okay, so get your phone out or use your computer. This is kind of fun stuff. I like to put this in there. We, we gotta keep it fun. You, you have, we have to, and we gotta keep it educational. So nobody can say, Mr. Bristel, you're too, having too much fun there and the kids aren't learning. Nah, we are learning. Okay, everybody get logged in. Come on. I'm gonna start here in just a second. Great, good, nice Sander. Come on, Cole. Monty, Monty's already on there, right? Yes, Monty's there, Toby. Oh, wake up, right? Do the Dumb and Dumber, right? Come on, do the Jeff Daniel and Dumb and Dumber when he's falling asleep. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, that's good, all right, so let's start. Okay.
You got make your answer. Hey, this is pretty fun. I love this. Okay, time's up. Let's see. Four people got it. If you got that one right, and let, let's see if it'll tell me who got it right or not. Let me see. Nope. All right, there's the lift. This one you pull in right here. You come in right this way, okay? And then these arms come out. This is in this is in ground. These pistons go back down on the ground, so it's very low profile, okay? All right. It doesn't show me whose answers got what. Oh man, I can't get on you for having the wrong answer. I'm, I'm just kidding. All right, next one. Oh, there we go. There's the score. Nice. Pretty close there, Luke and Cole. Next one. <laughs> okay, so is that the best vehicle for a um, rotating tires? No, because you have to drive on that lift and you're lifting on the tires, okay? So you can't move them because you're lifting on the tires. So the vehicle's on the tires, so that doesn't work. So the answer was definitely false. Two, two of you got the wrong answer. <clears throat> Oop, Toby's still leading. It's, it's close, Monty's coming up. Okay, and then there's Cole. Way to go, Cole. Okay, Matt, Aiden, oh my gosh, come on. Next one. Ooh, you guys answered that one super fast. Okay, nice. So a transmission service on this, okay? That'll work if your transmission is in the middle, in the front, or even in the back in a rear engine car. So this one works fine because it's it's a twin post and everything's out of the way once the vehicle is up in the air. So that one is definitely, okay, true, okay? Oh, <laughs> Toby and Monty are going head to head here. Okay, next one. You get more points the faster you answer. Okay. Oil change. No, nope, that one didn't work for an all change. I, I went past the picture. I'm sorry. I don't think I can go back. But um, because the lift was in the way of the oil pan. I mean, you could probably maybe try and finagle it, but then you take a chance of hurting yourself or damaging the car. So Toby is still leading just barely. Monty's coming up. Okay. And then there's Luke and Matt. Okay. Aiden, you're there. Okay, right, it's in the ground, much harder to get to the components. Okay, fantastic, you guys, okay. It's not the only one only one piston, okay, because that was a, I think it was a twin piston lift, right? So, okay, nice job. Let's see where the points are. Oh, Luke takes the lead. Okay, Toby, you gotta get back on it. Aiden and Monty still there. Matt, you're coming up. Nice, very nice. Okay, yes, that's an in-ground pneumatic, which is air, 
hydraulic, which is oil, okay? We can't use air to lift the car. We have to use oil, but the air pushes the oil in and the weight is actually on the oil. Well, if it leaks and you don't have one of those big barrier boxes that they've been putting in probably the last 10 years, that oil is gonna get down into the surrounding dirt and contaminate the land. So, okay, let's see where we're at. Aiden takes the lead on that one. Whoa. Okay, interesting. True, that is true, right. Because those are above ground lifts, they're just bolted in. Aiden maintains his, his lead there. Okay. Toby falls back. Come on, Toby. Ooh, I got somebody. Um, you know what? It could be the, it, you know what? I, I should have probably made um, the triangle red. That could be one. You're moving the old lift to install a new one. That is right. Okay. So, you know, I will go back and change that. So that's, that's my, that's my, my mistake there. Okay. Um, there's the wheel chocks it actually falls down into those. This is the old lift and they're doing, it's, it's actually, they did this in my room. Very similar to this, they have to break the concrete to get down at that piston right there, okay? So it looks like they're gonna be repairing it uh, instead of maybe installing another one and, and just taking that out because they'd be breaking the concrete, I think all around here possibly. So it could be either one of those. So that's that's my mistake on that. Let's see who where we at, we're at now. Monty takes the lead, okay. Almost done. Okay, everybody's split on that one. Yes, they do. They use those. I go to the shop when I take my car and I get my tires at Costco because they do free flat repairs. They do free rotation. They do free uh, rebalancing. You have to have your tires rebalanced every five to 7,000 miles because as the tires are wearing, the rubber is coming off. Okay, we lose our tread. The rubber comes off and the weight of the tire changes. When the weight of the tire changes, the balance changes because when it's balanced, and we have a balancer here, when it's balanced, it's balanced at that moment. But then what if a wheel weight comes off? We scrape the curve and we take a weight off or the sticky weights fall off, okay? That tire is now not balanced anymore. And you, whether you know that is when you're driving, usually at higher rates of speed, 65, 75, your wheel will start to shake like this and you're not hitting the brake at all, you know that something's out of balance, okay? And it's really annoying, especially on long drives. So Costco, I go over and I look and I watch what they're doing and uh, they do have those types of lifts. They're just, um, they come in, they're one piece and they just sit on top of the concrete. So let's see. And Luke now takes the lead. Okay, it's close. Oh, well, actually no, Luke has gotten a commanding 10% lead there. Last one. Ah. Same picture as the last one. Okay, it's true. That is true. Good. Most of you got that. So these, it's not lifting on the wheels. There's no arms with saddles that you can move, right? We can lift on four spots. Okay, on the frame of the vehicle. It's not in ground where you got the forks that are gonna come up and catch the differential or maybe the control arms on the suspension, nothing like that. So where exactly is this lifting? It's lifting on that long metal piece, okay? 
where the body comes down. It's where you come down, where the body comes down and the body stops. There's like this little wedge of metal that kind of sticks about that, about that big, okay? It's called the pinch weld, okay? After that, you now go under the car and you're away from the body and you start to go towards the components underneath the car. It's not the body anymore. Well, you have to lift on those pinch welds, okay? It's a vertical piece of metal and it's very heavy duty. It's made for that. And see the rubber on top of those? That lifts right behind the front tires and in front of the back tires where the lift spots are and those little arrows are, which is on most unibody cars. You can't use this for a frame car because remember the body is bolted to the frame, okay? And if you try and lift on the frame, everything on the, on the body, everything's bolted to the frame, you will actually bend the body up off the frame and you'll, because you'll, everything's on the frame besides the body, okay? The body's just bolted to it, so you can't lift on it. So this does lift on the pinch welds, okay? And let's see where, where we're at. Monty, fantastic. Matt is second. <laughs> oh no, I got it wrong. Monty's third, it's three, two, one. And Luke, fantastic, nice job. And the runners up are Aiden, Toby, okay? Nice job, you guys. Oh, this is kind of fun. Okay, nice job. All right, so let's let's get past this. Let me go back to here. There we go. All right, so that's that wheel chalk I was telling you about. Rotary puts these in. I don't know if the other companies do, but Rotary always sticks one of these in. They bolt it right to the ground, okay? You're gonna be most likely your front driver's side tire is gonna be right in that for your average car. And as long as you're in there, you're gonna be spaced left to right and front to back is gonna be fine, okay? So you make sure your tire is there. Okay, there's your saddle. Okay, you have to slide it out. Okay, and then you might have to lift these arms up depending on what kind of car you're lifting. Okay, there's the long one that reaches up in there. This is the short one. Okay, if you just need a short reach or you can just leave it flat. Okay, flat like this. And they actually, these little holes here, they have little rubber um, cushions that go in there. So when you lift on those pinch welds, you don't bend them as bad. Okay, people don't like those things getting bent. Okay. Get it underneath the car. This is a really long reach one. This is if you got like, like a lifted pickup truck, right? It's lifted, and then the and you know the body's coming way down. Like it could, it could, it could come that far down over the frame, and you got to really get up in there to get something. Maybe you're going to get the differential, right? You got to get up in there and get it. This is a high reach. These are adapters. We have a bunch here. Okay, get it under the lift points. Okay. Push it up like I showed you in the video. Okay, make, make, make contact. Might need to get back on your hands and knees again to make sure these are in the right spot. Okay, shake the vehicle. Okay, don't shake on anything that's gonna bend or break. Okay, there's the pinch weld right there. That's the pinch weld. And there should be an arrow or something in there that'll actually show you where the lift spot is. Okay, there's, there's using that thing right there. There's the flip up, your short flip up. And that those little notches sometimes are where you have to lift between those notches. Won't be an arrow, it'll actually be notches, okay? Owner's manual will tell you. All right, and then you're gonna lift it up. This is removing the safety latches. That's actually for bringing it down. Yep, they are bringing it down. Bringing it down, pull the arms back in, okay? The arms won't move unless this lift is all the way on the ground, okay? If it's up in the air at all, I'm not completely on the ground, these arms are locked in place because they don't want the arms moving when the vehicle's up in the air at all. So make sure it's all the way down. Okay, all right. Here's a quick video. Okay, and this should take us to the end. All right, so I signed this to you guys yesterday. You probably need to go into your Google Classroom and watch this. Okay, and do this. Let's just do it, we'll just do it right here. But you can do it do this later. Using an automotive lift is a common task for trained automotive lift technicians performing. Everybody see that okay? Every day. However, it's a critical task. Yeah. It should be done in safe. I can see it. So I'm gonna go through it with you right now. Okay. And I'm not gonna answer the questions. I'm gonna let you guys figure that out. Okay. Then you're gonna go back and do it later. Okay, or you can do it in your Google Classroom if you want. I'm just doing it right now. 
employing the proper procedures. There are many hazards to be avoided to reduce the risk of damage to customer vehicles and injury or death to technicians. This video is an aid to point out some of the dangers involved and the proper procedures required to operate an automotive lift safely. <laughs> There are right ways to lift a vehicle and wrong ways. Before you lift any vehicle, make sure that you are properly trained in the operation of automotive lifts. It has the potential to be dangerous work and training is a must. Always read the operator's manual provided by the manufacturer of the lift. It's important that the operator be familiar with the safety features, maintenance, inspection and operation of each lift before use. Oh, okay, sorry. I pay attention. What must you read before operating the vehicle lift? Uh, I think it was the lift owner's manual. Right. I know what it is. Right. Okay. Hey, we're rolling along. Check that your lift has been safely inspected by a qualified lift serviceman within the past year. Most automotive lift service companies affix a decal to the lift that states when the next inspection is due. Besides the all important. Okay. So, what does the decal on the side of the lift mean? Come on, somebody tell me. The year it was manufactured. Nope. And eh, wrong. Thanks, thanks, Alexis. Was that, was that you? Inspected. Yeah. When it was inspected. It was good try, good try. When it was inspected, right. It had little punch outs on the year and the month. Okay, good try. I'm glad you're participating, fantastic. Okay. Good. I got 100 on 100. Important annual inspection. Perform the periodic inspection and maintenance as stated by the manufacturer yourself. Put your safety in your hands. For example, make a daily examination of the cables and chains for wear and ensure the safety latches are engaging and disengaging fully. If you're using a twin post lift, Check the operation of the arm restraints and make sure they disengage and engage fully. Once a month, torque anchors to manufacturer's specs. Okay, how often do we torque it to specs? Once a month. Once a month, that was easy. I tried to get that right in there, okay? Okay, once a month, yeah. Check the hydraulic fluid. Check the torque of all fasteners. Check that the lift is equalized properly. On a twin post lift, the locks should click simultaneously. Check hoses for cracks or chafing and check the condition of the superstructure. <laughs> Only a trained operator who has performed the manufacturer's recommended maintenance and inspection on a lift that has been inspected by a lift service specialist is ready to lift a vehicle. First check that the vehicle you are about to lift does not exceed the maximum capacity of the lift. Look inside the vehicle. You must make sure the vehicle is not too heavy for what the lift is rated for. Is that true or false? True. True. Piece of cake, huh? Mr. Prestel's doing being cakey with you. Make it more challenging, Mr. B, please. Check for unexpected loads. Never lift a vehicle that has a heavy load inside. Then check that the bay is clean and tidy. Clean up any oil spills, tools, and debris. The amount of cargo or load in the vehicle has to be added to the weight of the vehicle when calculating if the lift can safely lift a vehicle. That sure. sounds like that. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that sounds right. Yeah. Mr. B's acing it. Well, I should. I made it. Okay. Now you guys are going to go back and do this later without me. If you're using a twin post lift, make sure that the lift's arms are located in the home position. Have your spotter stand at the front, but see how nice and clean that shop is. Mr. Brustel is making sure that we're going to get our shop like that. It should be nice and clean. You come in, you're like, yeah, I'm home in my high school auto shop. And this is where I'm going to have some fun and learn stuff about taking care of my car. I like being here. To the side of the vehicle to avoid being hit in the event of an accident. Drive the vehicle into the lifting area. Why does the spotter need to stand to the side of the vehicle? Uh, we saw it, man. We saw in that video, huh? The kid, the guy got hit, and they had to lift the vehicle off him. Hopefully, he wasn't hurt. Maybe he was just pinned and he couldn't move. And hopefully, he wasn't hurt in any way. But that's it. Took what four or five people to lift the front of that car. I guess they couldn't pull it back off. Of, off of him using the drive because part of the wheels were off the lift. So and it was front wheel drive. So I would say, which one, actually, I'm not going to tell you, which one do you guys think? Probably the first one, but I mean, both of them are correct. So to avoid being hit by the vehicle. Nice. Thanks, Aiden. Right. Still a hundred out of hundred. We're cruising. If you're working on a twin post lift, it's very important to know the vehicle manufacturer's recommended lifting points. They can be found in the shop manual for the vehicle or can be obtained by the Automotive Lift Institute. When using a twin post lift, the vehicle's center of gravity or its balancing point is a great consideration. Typically, the center of gravity on a front wheel drive car is located under the steering wheel, yet, on a rear wheel drive vehicle, its center of gravity is located under the front seat. What is that car? Ford T-Bird. A T-Bird, that's right. I think that's the one they used in Thelma and Louise, wasn't it? I don't know if you ever watched that. It's kind of a, it's kind of maybe a girl movie, but it's, it's still pretty good. That was, that was Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis at the way back. I think that's what they were driving around. I think it was that same color almost too. That's a really cool car. It's a rear wheel drive. So front engine, but then you have a transmission about right here. Then you have this drive shaft that comes back and then interlinks with the differential in the back, which then, you know, attaches to the back wheels. Okay. And the differential and then drives these back wheels that moves the car forward. So the front wheels are just for basically steering. So you got to move back further. Okay because you have weight here and you have weight here and there's some weight in the middle. The transmission is right here too. So that's where the center of gravity is. However, this is not the rule for vehicles with engines in the rear. The center of gravity is a great cause for concern in using a twin post lift and has to be spotted midway between the front end. The engine is here. The transmission is here and it's right above these tires. So. These vehicles really handle great in mud and snow because you have all that weight right above the drive tires. Volkswagens are like this, Corvairs are like this, Porsches are like this. Um, front wheel drive cars are like this too because the front wheel tires are moving the car, it's pulling it forward. And then the engine is sitting over that too, okay? And then the, they, the wheels can also be turned because those are the turning wheels. So, and then you have, um, continuous velocity drive shafts with continuous velocity or CV joints. So I had a Toyota Tercel back in the early eighties, my first new car. And I had snow almost as much as I showed you in my sister's pictures. And I tooled through the snow, like it was nothing. And people who had rear wheel drive cars like that T-Bird would get stuck because there wasn't enough weight to really push that back end down to sit down where it makes contact to the, with the road more. So you get more traction in the snow. So I could tool around in snow and all these other rear wheel drive cars were getting stuck. And rear arms. On a four post hoist. The center of gravity for a vehicle changes if the front wheel drive 
if it is front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or rear engine, or a rear, oh, I gotta do that, rear engine vehicle, I'll have to take the L out of there. What do you think on this one? True. True, right, easy. You know what? I'm not trying to throw curveballs at you guys. I can make this much, much more challenging, but I just want you guys to pay attention, okay? Right. It's lunch. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, it's lunchtime. Thank you. I'm going to just hit true. And we'll submit. Okay, I'm not, I'm going to escape out of here. Okay, and go back and move on. All right, the rest of these are questions that we would have went through. Okay. Um, and then at the end, it's just a little important activity, what you learn for the day. So we almost got all of it. Okay. Thank you guys for paying attention. A lot of material to cover. I'm going to post this in Google Classroom with the video of today too, okay? I'll see you guys on Thursday, okay? Have a wonderful day, stay dry. All right, thank you.